guard tracks here. These must have been left by the miners. Let us make our way to the end of Lingju Pass. If there are no footprints there, it would suggest that the miners are still within the pass itself. However, if we find new tracks, we can follow them wherever they may lead. It would appear that they made their way through Lingju Pass and kept moving. If we follow their footprints, we should be able to find where they went! Hi there! Have you seen anyone dressed like a miner around here? A miner? I'm afraid not. Uh, let's try someone else. Hello! Have you seen any miners nearby? About this tall? Four of them? Stop bothering me! Can't you see I'm cloud watching? Jeez! A little grumpy, aren't we? Whatever. Let's go ask someone else. <laughs> It must have been about four or five days ago. There were a few men who came through here carrying baskets and picks. I guess that could have been them. Yeah, that's them! Four or five days ago? It appears that they were moving slower than we'd anticipated. Traversing the geography of Lingju Pass must have held them up. It was so strange. Four big guys with lifeless expressions. It was like they were in some sort of trance. And there was a child staggering in front of them. Huh. This child. Did you see what they look like? I caught a glimpse. Blue hair. Short. I think... I think it was a girl. She wasn't smiling. In fact, she looked very serious. And they took this road? Yes. They followed it straight from here. Let's go after them. Those monsters were so aggressive. They must have noticed me walking through. Before I knew it, they were all over me. Thank you all for saving me. My name is Wanyu. I belong to Liyue's Shengyu Hall. I head up our human culture and civilization research. Huh? You sure you're not a miner? A miner? Yeah, we're looking for a group of four strong fellas carrying mining equipment. I... I think I saw those people. Really? Yes. I set off from Nantianmen the day before yesterday, heading for Lingju Pass. About halfway there, I came across some people. A few men and a child. I was in a hurry. I didn't get a good look. I'm afraid I'm not even sure what they looked like. Apologies. I think that's all we needed to hear. Thank you. I hope it's useful to you. I'd better get going. There's a conference I need to attend. Again, thank you all for your help. According to this scholar, the miners were heading for Nantianmen. Can we be absolutely sure that it was the men that we're looking for? A child with a group of adults sounds pretty close to Paimon. Uh, what? Hey, perhaps that rock over there can tell us more. It looks promising. I'll do my best. It's the same group, all right. They followed this road. <laughs> Mr. Kunjun, your stone-seeing is something I won't forget in a hurry. 
I suppose it is an asset, though I rarely find a use for it. But praise for Mr. Zhongli is high praise indeed. It's a good thing we brought our Kunjun compass along. We would have lost all sense of direction a long time ago. <laughs> you think so? I guess it's been a worthwhile trip then. It feels like... like we're cracking a criminal case. It's a lot of fun. Be that as it may, we would do well to keep our guards high. Four fully grown men in a trance-like state, walking ceaselessly day and night over hills and mountains led by a child. This is no ordinary incident. Oh, you're quite right, Mr. Zhongli. We should have our wits about us. That's not all. Our scholar was attacked by Geovishop hatchlings, but the level of aggression they exhibited was unusual. We have encountered many clues along the way. So far, they've pointed us in the right direction. Hmm. The miners headed in the direction of Nantianmen the day before yesterday. From here, they would have had to navigate a perilous mountain road. If their destination is indeed Nantianmen, we should be able to catch up with them. Great! No time to lose! I left a mark in the vicinity just now. If Uncle Dai does pass through here, it should guide him to us. Clever thinking! A classic Zhongli move! There's a basket lying here, too. This must be one of the miners. Hey! Hello? Can you hear us? Judging by his appearance, he must have collapsed from exhaustion. Should we wake him up? I can... I can still dig. Oh, sounds like he's whispering something. It seems that he thinks he still has work to do. Something's not right. There's a camp nearby. We should take him there and monitor his condition before deciding our next move. He's worked himself into a stupor. Thankfully, he's not in serious danger. Paimon heard him talking about digging for something. Did he dig himself into this state? It's certainly a possibility. Hmm? It looks like there's something in his pocket. Are these... ore fragments? Hmm... I just witnessed the memories within these ore fragments. This person brought these fragments out of the mine. He's one of the four that we're searching for. How he came to be here is what we need to understand. So he was kidnapped, and then abandoned here. But if they didn't need him, why bring him all the way out here? Unless something happened. Something that led him to fall behind. This is too mysterious! Oh, wait a moment! Seeing these fragments has jogged my memory. I have something for you. What is it? Ooh, is it a present? Something... for us? As I mentioned, before I met Uncle Dai, I was in a daze. After setting out with you on this case, it feels like a fog is lifting. I was so happy when Uncle Dai enlisted you to help. I would never have managed to track down these clues by myself. These are some crystals that I bought from the market. Not any old crystals, mind you. This purity is extraordinarily rare. One for each of you. A memory, if you will. It's beautiful. Oh, and the colors change as you turn it. It's like a different crystal from each angle. But of course, take it. And this one is for Mr. Shongli. Uh... Huh? I is something wrong? Not to your liking? On the contrary, I just hadn't anticipated receiving a gift during the current circumstances. But 
Thank you. I will take good care of it. I'm pleased you like them. It's nice to be able to give a gift that others can appreciate. Oh, I see more rocks over there. You should all get some rest. I'm going to scan the surroundings. Perhaps there are more memories to uncover. You sure like rocks, huh, Kunjun? Ores are the crystals of the earth, the sediment of time itself. I feel at peace among them. Get some rest and call me when you're ready to set off. I won't be far. Rest easy. I surveyed the area. There's no danger here. Oh, however, there is something I wanted to discuss with you. Huh? What's with the seriousness all of a sudden? Traveler, does Dragonfall mean anything to you? You mean the ore that Kunjun's looking for? What's so special about it? Dragonfall is an incredibly rare ore used in forging. The majority of regular crystals are formed in high-temperature environments. Dragonfall, on the other hand, is formed as a product of elemental reactions. Elemental reactions can produce material objects? <sighs> Indeed they can. However, only a minority can survive for long periods of time. Dragonfall first emerged in the midst of a great battle thousands of years ago. Powerful clashes of elemental energy gave birth to elemental crystals. When the fighting ceased, these geological remnants were miraculously preserved. <sighs> and yet they are crystal creations all the same. Few and far between, relatively unknown. A few hundred years ago, they were virtually mined into obscurity. Why is it then? that a citizen of Liu now wishes to strike upon ore that has long since vanished from the Earth. Yeah, if he knows of its existence, surely he knows all of it's already been mined. Weird. Paimon doesn't get it. There are those in the mining trade who retain a keen interest in Dragonfall. But for someone like Mr. Kunjun, whose motivations for seeking it are unclear even unto himself, it's practically unheard of. Ulterior motives? <gasps> is he a villain? A conclusion that is presently impossible to reach. We must watch and wait. Don't forget, rescuing those miners is the primary objective. As for anything else, sooner or later the tide will reveal the lie of the land. We're drawing closer to our goal. I believe we should continue to follow this road through. Now that we've found one, the others won't be far away. When you're well rested, call Mr. Kunjun over to us. We still have more investigation ahead. We should ensure this miner is settled here at the camp. Once we've brought this matter to a close, we can return and attend to him. I suggest we leave a note for Uncle Dai. If he does find the camp, he'll know what to do. No problem. I'm done here. Any results, Mr. Kunjun? There are many beautiful rocks here, but nothing out of the ordinary. I couldn't find any clues. Then again, the memories of ore can shift with the passage of time and the changing of the environment. Hmm. Difficult to say. I feel that ore memories tend to be from the recent past. So there's never any ancient memories? Rocks endure, but as eons pass, their memories are erased. Those memories that survive are rooted in powerful emotion or thought. That makes sense. It is the same for people. Indeed. Let's keep going. Wow. Such an immense tree. And there's so many mysterious looking crystals up there too. Amazing. This ancient tree... Let's conduct separate investigations. I'll take that area. Perhaps you could survey this section. All right then. 
Kunjun, can you see anything worth investigating? Well, there is this stone tablet here. Doesn't seem very interesting. Paimon's gonna look over there. Huh. It's worth a try, surely. Let me see. Just a bit lightheaded. It's past. Nothing to worry about. Not... <sighs> Not yet. <sighs> Whatever. Paimon's going to investigate over there. Why don't you climb the tree and have a look? If you don't try, you won't know. Anyway, you'll be able to get a good look at our surroundings from up there. <sighs> oh. Um... Y you think so? When has Paimon ever come up with a bad idea, hmm? Wait a minute. Paimon can fly. Uh, all right, Paimon will go. You wait here. Paimon will... All of you, come here. Huh? Zhongli's voice came from behind the tree. Did he find another clue? Quick, let's go see. Maybe he found another miner. This has been newly dug. It would appear our answer is up ahead. Is that a voice coming from the tunnel? <laughs> Someone else go first! Compose yourselves. I will lead us in. Hmm. There is an unusual presence emanating from inside the tunnel. Prepare yourselves and tread lightly. I'm afraid that this whole tunnel is the fruit of their strenuous labor. Huh? That gate? Has it been there all along? Digging a tunnel to this ancient seal. Had they not been discovered, they would undoubtedly persevere until the gate. <laughs> your power incarnate. But if you recall, Ishtaha, this is not how we intended for events to transpire. Waste not your words. Your life is mine. Worthless. Here. Ah! Watch out! Allow me. You've recovered. How can that... Focus your efforts, Morax! Adventure that's gonna hurt in the morning! 
stabilize. Choose to believe, so be it. He who bears the weight of memory is destined to shoulder the burden of truth, as it ought to be. This is order. Solidify. Be think you can destroy me? Stabilize. Years after you sealed me underground, you return for the second time. <sighs> you should call it by its name, Ejdaha. Fate. Fate? Fate? <laughs> So here lies the wisdom of the gods. Destroy all deemed redundant. Endless tyrants to ravage the wilderness. No. You have forgotten. That... that voice! Aishtaha. Huh? Kunjun? Morax. It's been a while. Your... Ejdaha. The very same. During the battle, you imbued us with your power. <laughs> yes. It was all I could manage. Forgive me for concealing the truth, Traveler. There were things that only became clear to me upon reaching this tree. Allow me to elaborate. I am not Ejdaha the whole, but a fragment. Heaven and Earth, Yin and Yang, opposing forces. You can consider the existence of me and the Ejdaha you see there to be a reflection of such polarities. We are a schism of the will, the will of Ejdaha. So so there are two Ashtahas? No, it can't be. That's impossible. When the seal loosened, your power manifested in this world as a child. With this new identity, you were able to vent about the forces that suppressed you. But would anyone listen? Would they even care? That's when it occurred to you. The loosening of the seal constituted an opportunity to strike back. Kidnapping the miners was all in aid of digging to the entrance to the seal itself. Your plan was to launch an attack on both ends, from outside and within, thereby fully destroying the seal. The audacity! Are you insane? If you truly are a part of me, how is it you find yourself standing on the side of the Betrayer? I was another power awakened with the loosening of the seal. Too weak to reincarnate, but strong enough to possess a human body. I was barely conscious. I couldn't remember who I was. Only the past would elicit a reaction from me. But my aim was clear. Find Morax, and aid him in stopping you. I had sensed that something was amiss when you mentioned Dragonfall. Had your power been but a little stronger, I would have recognized you. Don't blame yourself. I have changed beyond all recognition. Only when I touched the stone tablet did I truly remember. It's been so long. 
a secret beyond all comprehension of youthful humanity and ancient dragonkind. Morax, do you want to tell the tale? There would be no harm in it. The decision is yours. <laughs> you haven't changed. Then allow me. Ejdaha was once a friend and ally of the Geo Archon Morax, with a lifespan far exceeding that of mankind. However, that which is derived of the Earth is no more or less than the Earth itself. The memories of rocks do not last long. Those memories that survive are rooted in powerful emotion. But as time passes, so these memories fade into obscurity. Erosion is the world's greatest destroyer of memories. Erosion ground Ejdaha's consciousness into oblivion. Slowly, he forgot the face of his old friend, and his memories of defending Liyue Harbor disintegrated. Ejdaha, now incomplete, became irascible, aggressive. What would you expect? It was humanity that attacked the ley lines that sustained me! This much is true, which is why you attacked the chasm. Why you waged war against Morax. In the beginning, in order to open up new territory and increase production, the citizens of Liyue came to the mountains to mine. Overexploitation caused the ley lines to quake, which brought untold suffering to us. Erosion made us even more savage. No matter how we struggled, we lost the ability to coexist with humanity. We lost all reason. Morax shared with us some of his power to prevent further erosion, but it was futile. Everything returns to dust. It is the natural order, an unstoppable force. And so we became you. And from your will, I emerged. <sighs> I am your final contract. Witness the promise between Ejdaha and Morax. You can hate me, but you cannot deny me. No! No! I am the remnants of Ejdaha's benevolence, the echo of a contract set in stone. I harbor a willingness to go further, a willingness to coexist peacefully with mankind. No, no! It is I, Ejdaha, forged of elemental crystal, bearer of the weight and memories of the Earth, older than the mountains and the oceans that decides. I will not swear allegiance to this insect. Morax is not an insect. A lord over insects is nothing but an insect in turn. You forgot yourself. Nobody held Morax in higher regard than you or I. That which you have forgotten, I hold here in my heart. If you are the memory of the Earth, then I am the memory of coexistence. Of coexistence with humanity. All powers under heaven rise and fall of land and sea. A star appears within the wild. A sun ascends as bright as Jade. Hmm. Strange. What, what is this feeling? And all this? You are spent. 
and I will soon disappear. Before I do, heed these words. In the wilderness, snow falls on a spring day. In an instant, it will melt. Even where it is fleeting and leaves no trace. Even where it will never fall again. No! That isn't true! I don't accept this as fate! Perhaps it isn't, but it remains an inevitable misfortune. Satisfied, Ishtaha. I had to make amends. Satisfaction had no part in it. So, Morax, you call yourself Zhang Li these days? I do. Well, I'm afraid old habits die hard. To me, you're Morax. As you please. I never did forget your gift of sight. I hardly lifted a finger. Think nothing of it. And yet, you could see. You wouldn't know the yearning of a blind dragon, searching for the sun. A pair of eyes, from Morax to Ejda. This... I will remember this. <sighs> Your power is nearly spent. Ah, perceptive as always, my friend. Shall we get going, you and I? Surely the pressing matter is still that of the miners trapped outside the seal. Indeed. Hence the need to get going. To fix the damage left in your wake. Hmm. Straight down to business as always. Let's go.